just wanted to demonstrate um, how you would diagnose or how I diagnose uh, airbag codes um, this is not the way the factory recommends but it is the way that I do it and if you understand how the system works you won't do any damage and you won't hurt yourself so if you don't know how the system works you should learn but when you reach the point where you feel comfortable working on the system this is how I would check it this car came in with this um, open in D squib circuit that's the driver's side airbag the airbag is a two-stage airbag and this is the airbag right here um, the back of the airbag has two connectors it's one for each of the um, the stages one stage is setting a code so the problem is how do you know if it's the airbag or if it's the clock spring or spiral wound cable well, the way I do it is I check for codes first. This is what I have here. I now show two codes only because I have the airbag disconnected. And before I forget to mention it, after I pull the airbag off, you see how it's laying with the metal side down. This is the safest way to uh, place these in a storage area is with the metal side down. The reason being is that's the heavy side. If the airbag goes off accidentally, the uh, light side the airbag will pop up and it might do a little damage here and there but it's not going to hurt you or kill you at least it shouldn't but if you put it with the air metal side up you can see if it's facing right now and this airbag went off guess what this thing's going right to your face so always point uh, store the airbag down like that all right so back to this um diagnosis so the reason I have two, again, is because um, both stages are showing a code because both connectors are currently disconnected. But this is the next step. Now I'm using a Solus Ultra with the latest software. I do have a TechStream. Um, actually the TechStream will do the same thing. TechStream is the factory tool. The Solus Ultra is actually faster, believe it or not, than the TechStream. It's faster in setup, ID code reading, code clearing, um, and it's not a commercial for Solus or for Snap-on. I'm just showing you what works. I used the TechStream yesterday and I'm using the Solus today and this is much faster. So I'm going to show you the next step right now. Okay, so the next step is to um, jumper across one of the stages on the clock spring. One of the stages, you short the uh, connector. So what I'm using is uh, acupuncture piercing probes from this company right here. I get them through aeswave.com. Uh, just Google AES Wave, and they have uh, these probes available. They're tapered. They have a very fine needle point, and they're tapered to the full thickness that you see here. I lightly rest them inside the connector. Do not shove this uh, or anything else into the connector. You will damage it. You will spread open the connector, and then you're going to have codes anyway. So you just lightly rest it inside the cavity and let just uh, gravity and friction hold it in there and that's more than enough for testing all right so the next step is to back out of this screen here and we are going to um, clear the codes yes I'm sure I want to clear the codes okay I'm going to continue now I'm going to go back and read the codes All right, so right now, in theory, if I'm shorting uh, one side right there, in theory, I should only have uh, one open code and at least a shorted code or, or a, a normal code. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the orange connector to the black connector because I shorted the connector and nothing changed. Okay, now I'm going to change connectors. All right, so now I'm back and I'm going to clear the codes again. Clearing it. Yes, I'm sure. I'm going to read the codes. Current codes. All right, you see now I'm shorting the black connector and I erased it and now I only have one open circuit code. So before when I had it on the orange connector, I should have only had one code as well. You see that right there. 
So now I'm going to go further down and do further testing because now I'm suspecting this spiral wound cable. All right. So now I've, I've gone into the wiring diagrams and I've found that um, these are the proper cavities. I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm disconnecting the clock spring or the spiral wound cable. I'm going directly to the steering column harness. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, to do the same thing that I did before and clear the codes and see what I have. All right, you can see that I have two open circuit codes after I cleared it, and I'm shorting one of them. So I'm going to go back and do the same thing I did before. Right now I should only have one. So actually I'm going to double check my, um, my connections here and try it again. Okay, you can see that it, there's now only one code open in the second stage. And um, I am rechecked my connection and I shorted those wires right there. I'm going to go ahead and switch it over and see if I have now a code in the first stage. Okay, you can see that what I have now is a uh, open circuit code for the first stage. You see it just says D squib. It doesn't say D squib second step. That means it's the first stage. So the stage one code is now there. So basically what I'm showing you is that by shorting um, the two stages one by one, or you could actually do it at the same time if you had uh, two sets of jumpers, and by shorting them and showing that the open circuit code goes away, it basically uh, proves that the harness is in good shape. If I would have done the same thing with the clock spring hooked up and shorted these two, and I would have seen a um, uh, the open circuit codes go away on both of those connectors uh, each time I shorted one or the other, then that would basically say that this circuit is okay. But when I shorted it, only one open circuit code would go away. So before I go replacing that, which you don't want to go ahead and test uh, with anything, um, with any sort of meters other than the factory's harness, um, then you basically don't want to guess. So rather than throwing an airbag at it, I checked everything else, and everything else showed that this spiral-wound cable or clock spring is bad. So that's what we're going to change.